coming to paperback and e-readers everywhere. East deemed horror of the hyena woman. Hell's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoman in this action-packed all-new East Team series adventure. Pre-order your copy of East Team Horror of the Hyena Woman on Amazon.com today. I've been listening to a lot of the chatter revolving around the passing of your YouTuber Kevin Samuels. And a lot of that chatter coming from black men has been quite troubling. Now, many of these black men are out here talking about how Kevin Samuels revolutionized the YouTube platform and with his over million subscribers. But when I take a critical examination of your Kevin Samuels, he was nothing more than a tool of your YouTube that was being used to distract from the growing movement of black empowerment on new black media. Now, new black media has been making a lot of impact, not only on social media, but new black media has been making major impacts on the grassroots, and they've been making major progress over the last couple of years. Whether it be things like Jason Black's billboards up here in New York City, in Queens, or people going out here actively confronting Jim Clyburn just on Sunday, a go on Mother's Day, we are seeing the impact of new black media on the black masses. And this is something that the people who run many of these social media companies do not like. And because they don't like the fact that we have a growing grassroots movement in new black media and that new black media is having an impact on the way black people see and think about the world and black people are no longer going to these mainstream platforms like your CNN Plus and your BNC which basically went out of business due to your black masses no longer supporting them they know that they are in trouble and that's why they need to find some kind of way to try to keep the momentum of new black media from really building up ahead of steam. So in order to keep most people from really joining up on the bandwagon of new black media and start really taking the talking points of new black media seriously, what your YouTube needed was a distraction, and that distraction came in the tailored suit of Kevin Samuels. Now, your Kevin Samuels, to a lot of black men, was representing all of their ideas of what an ideal black man was, but to your YouTube and the people who ran YouTube, he basically was a useful idiot. And this useful idiot was somebody they allowed to grow on their platform because any other black male YouTuber who used the same talking points over the last 14 years, those black men had their channels flagged and deleted all because they expressed their opinions. Whether it be guys like Ringo when he first came out Dan Freeman, Rick Scorpio, Thug Titian, and many others like Heavenly Truth One, all of those men who were using the same talking points had their channels flagged and deleted. And then you had guys like Tommy Sotomayor who had multiple channels flagged and deleted. But YouTube allows your Kevin Samuels to go out here and remain on their platform using the exact same talking points as those black men. However, his channel was never flagged once over the course of the years, and he was allowed to grow in popularity. And that was not something that was done unintentionally by the YouTube platform. No, that was something done by design because they needed a distraction and that distraction was Kevin Samuels. And as long as you had a majority of black men out here 
trying to emulate the behavior of your Kevin Samuels and following his online acolytes, you had no black men in large numbers going out here talking about black empowerment and you had no large numbers of black men talking about going out here and getting tangibles in exchange for their vote, going out here talking about creating a black agenda or talking about creating their own political candidates. No, as long as you had your black males out here following Kevin Samuels in his high value cult, you had a group of black men who were sitting there looking to try to go back and forth with women as they regurgitated the same rehashed talking points of the gender war that have been going on since 2005. And as these black men were out here following the male version of Oprah Winfrey and going out here following and listening and repeating many of his talking points, they were not really focused on gaining any sort of true power that would give them a significant value in American society. So as long as your black men were out here talking about Kevin Samuels, talking about the whole concept of a high value man and aspiring to be a high value man, they were not out here looking to go out here and grab real power and empower themselves and take power in their own community. So as long as your black males were out here looking to follow Kevin Samuels, they were out here thinking that they were going to create this idealized image of a high value man, but this whole high value man concept was basically a repackaging of the good black man or the Mr. Right that Madison Avenue and Hollywood created. And basically what your Kevin Samuels was doing was leading black men on a wild goose chase. And as they were going around in a circle, going back and forth with the same black women that they complained about, all they were doing was participating in the same circular arguments that made up the gender war. And as they were going on in these circular arguments, what they were doing was just go participating in a vicious cycle of behavior that was basically taking the black community nowhere. Now, many of these black males, they were talking about how all of this was leading to them improving themselves. But when I look at their behavior, I really don't see how these black men were improving themselves. Yes, a small group of black male YouTubers were improving their status on the platform. And as these black men were improving their status on the platform by getting more subs and views, we were not really seeing the black sector of YouTube really growing because as they continue to go and talk about your Kevin Samuels and his talking points, basically the black sector of YouTube was going nowhere. Yes, there were more people watching these channels and watching Kevin Samuels channels, but this was the perfect distraction and this distraction took a lot of people out from being focused on the road of black empowerment. So we had a large population of black people. They were looking, as Kid Organic has said in his video, to be entertained by Kevin Samuels and watching him go out here and castigate and criticize black women. But that all that was was entertaining for a large group of black men who got a cathartic release because your Kevin Samuels said the things that they did not have the courage to say to these black women who they said they have an issue with. And they could sit there and watch that the same way black women back in 1986 and the 1980s and the 90s 
sat there and watched Oprah Winfrey as, they, as she castigated black men on her show. And many of these black men were probably sitting inside of their homes or in their mama's house in the racing car bed, eating their chips and bonbons and sitting there listening to Kevin Samuels castigate black women. Again, the same way Oprah Winfrey used to verbally abuse black men and they got a cathartic release from this. And because your Kevin Samuels was out here participating in the behavior that they wanted to behave in, this is what led to many of these black males creating a covert contract with your Kevin Samuels and many of them looking to elevate your Kevin Samuels on his platform. It also led to many black women looking to elevate your Kevin Samuels as well. Now, many of these black women, they wanted to elevate your Kevin Samuels because they wanted to get the attention from him. And this is something that is natural to women. The more you criticize some of these women, the more attention they give you. And that's what made Kevin Samuels popular with women. Now, as your Kevin Samuels grew popular with women, this was also some thing that led many black men to be defensive of your Kevin Samuels. And they were defensive of him because they had formed a covert contract with your Kevin Samuels. And they believed that if they defended Kevin Samuels, they would gain some of his popularity and his influence. And because they saw him getting attention from women, they thought they could also get attention from women as well. Unfortunately, this was not a contract that your Kevin Samuels had with many of these men. It was something they imagined and something they created inside of their heads. And this is what happened to these men. That's why they are so defensive of him. That's why they call him a godfather, because these men deify Kevin Samuels, because he is the god that they serve. And everything that he says is the gospel to them. So as these men went out here and started deifying your Kevin Samuels, that worked perfectly for the people who run social media, because the people who run social media, they're sitting there making millions of dollars at the expense of these black men and black women. And as they make millions of dollars at the expense of these black men and black women, they get to program an idea in their mind and have them fighting a gender war where they continue to go back and forth with each other. And again, this benefits the white supremacists because if you're focused on gender war talking points going back and forth with each other, then you're not really focused on empowering black people and you're not really focused on building a stronger black community. So this benefits the white supremacists when you see your black men and black women going back and forth with each other on shows like Kevin Samuels, and it benefits them more when there are large populations of people sitting there watching Kevin Samuels going and castigating black women, because what this does is it adds fuel to the fire of that small group of black men who have a lot of anger and mommy issues, and then they take these mommy issues and project them onto black women. And that is the same thing, again, that Oprah Winfrey did with black women and had them attacking black men. But that's what they do, again, have you two fighting each other, because if you're fighting each other, you're not coming together. And that's, what, that's why they allowed Kevin Samuels to remain on the platform. And it's also why they allow a Symphony AG to remain on the platform. E even though all of these people allegedly would possibly be violating so-called YouTube's community guidelines, they were allowed to remain on the platform because they have a purpose. And that purpose is to keep you off the road of black empowerment because they know that black empowerment 
is gaining momentum. They know that black empowerment is starting to start to make some real progress, and they're making real progress even though it's just a small number of people, and they are making progress because they are serious about what they're doing, they are genuine about what they're doing, and the message of new black media is what many are want on these platforms don't want to see grow. They don't mind a Kevin Samuels being on their platform because the gender war is money in the bank for them. Watching black men and black women go back and forth with each other, regurgitating the same talking points over and over again, getting into circular arguments that make people feel good but do not allow for any serious growth. Yes, that's no problem on a platform. And again, it's a distraction designed to keep you from focusing on more important things like building black-owned businesses, going out here and participating in group economics, or participating in networking with other black business owners. You didn't see Kevin Samuels ever talk about those things on his platform like I have talked about on my platform and you never really saw Kevin Samuels trying to put people over and talk about their business products or their business ventures. No, you never saw Kevin Samuels doing any of this but the high value cult, they will come at you and try to say that he did all of these things but I never saw or heard a single endorsement of a product from him from a black owned business never heard of him talking about supporting black owned companies never heard of him talking about tangibles no never heard of him talking about anything as related to black empowerment but you'll have black men talking about how he was improving their lives putting on a suit does not improve your life unless you put some effort behind the work you're going to do. When I go out here and work at SJS Direct, I am oftentimes not wearing any sort of suit, and the business that I do is long and hard. So I know that a suit, yes, it may reflect an image, but the whole thing is, it's not helping me get my work done day to day. And your Kevin Samuels, yes, he looked nice in his suits, but I wear Brooks Brothers shirts in a lot of my videos, so who has the high value? I mean, we're both wearing all of the same types of clothes, but we're two different kinds of people. I mean, Sean James wears Brooks Brothers shirts in videos, and he's not high, wouldn't be considered high value in any way, shape, or form, but you have these guys running around talking about being high value men, but not really trying to be an asset to the most high living God and not looking to go out here and work in their communities and looking to have value as stewards of God. No, these men do not want to be stewards of God. No, basically what they wanted to do was use the high value man gimmick in order to get themselves more views, try to get some more clout on social media and try to be stars, but as they were out here trying to be stars and push the high value narrative, they were pushing black the black community further away from goals that needed to be accomplished, and that's again by design because they did not want you to be focused on things like new black media is pushing because new black media is about black empowerment new black media is about trying to build true value in the black community by pe black people working in the grassroots new black media is about black people going out here to empower themselves and new black media is also about trying to get tangibles for black people not trying to be a group of elites like the high value men were being trying to be another sector of the talented tenth a talented tenth that does nothing for black people but put on some designer suits and some designer cologne and then looks down at the black community and says they're better than the community and then wants to go out here and have the pick of the 
quality of the women in the black community and make them part of their rotation that are going to be at the back of their rotation. And then as they're going out here with their passports, getting their foreign and non-black women, then they want to go out here and talk bad about black women. That is what the high value cult wanted to do. Unfortunately, God had better plans because he saw that these men were participating in idolatry and this whole high value narrative was pushing people away from God and pushing black people away off the road to black empowerment. Because again, I saw, I see where this whole thing with your Kevin Samuels is, he's not a high value man to the black community. He was a high value asset to white supremacy. And he was a high value asset because he was a useful idiot they could use. And they used this useful idiot to go out here and push his narratives and push those narratives to push black people off the road to black empowerment. He was a tool that they used to go out here and push their anti-black agendas. And as they pushed their anti-black agendas, this pushed black people off the road. So your Kevin Samuels was the perfect high value asset for white supremacy because this high value asset was the distraction that they needed to go out here and keep black people blind and keep all of those black masses blind so that they could continue falling into the ditch of the gender war where they would go about flinging mud and feces at each other. And as they flinged mud and feces at each other, others would be allowed to capitalize at their expense. So again, when I look at your high value man, he was the perfect distraction and that distraction allowed the white supremacists to get to gain um, to take off focus from black people of serious matters. And what's really sad is we have a lot of black people who still aren't focused on serious matters because they're caught up in their feelings about the high value man who brought nothing of value to the black community. Now, if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the Eastim series, the John Hayes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis Legacy. The sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Legacy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere.